Let's just start with, with injury news for the weekend. Uh, anyone back? Uh, yeah, we've got um, David Vaughan's trained this week. Um, Andy Kellett's 50-50, uh, but David Vaughan's trained. Um, Enzio's been back in training. He's finished off all the hard yards he needed Monday, Tuesday. He's trained today um, and joined in bits of the earlier earlier during the week. So, so yeah, so them two uh, are back, and I think that's about it, yeah. The loss on Saturday obviously was a big blow for the, for the team, but how, how have the players responded to, to losing such a big match? Well, I think it's how we as a group, including the staff, how we all respond. You know, like you say, we can go in and we can shout and holler and drag the atmosphere down even more. We can try and pick it up and dust ourselves down and there's nothing we can do about Saturday now. And the disappointing thing is, in open play, we did loads of good stuff without the ball. You know, we were quite solid and just switched off one player, like we say, hasn't hasn't sort of seen his job through and we, we've conceded. So that was tough to take, but we have to move on and pick it up and then work out how we're going to be better, how we're going to deal with, with Yeovil and how we're going to cause them problems, how we're going to make sure they don't cause us problems. In the situation you're in, as a coaching staff, do you have to maybe be more positive than, than usual, find ways of, of lifting a dressing room perhaps a, a bit more than you would if you were mid-table or in a different position? Yeah, definitely. I think when you're winning games, there's always that nice feeling anyway. So everyone's happy, everyone's buzzing, everyone feels good. Um, when you're not and you forgot what that's like, then then the place can become you know, a little bit down and people are looking for... You know, looking for you to to try and lift it. So yeah, absolutely. Staff, the remit is, you know, we can't do nothing about Saturday. Now we go, we we train hard, we demand, and but we keep it positive and we keep everyone's spirits as high as we can. When you came in, even in your first press conference, you you admitted it would be a hard job. You, you didn't shirk away from that. Is it harder than you imagined on on that first day? I'd have liked to have put a few more points on the board than than I have done. Um, you know, I'd be totally honest with you. I'm. I, re I probably over criticise myself. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gutted that I haven't been able to put more points on the board. And you know, people talk about fine margins in football, and it's such a good saying because it's so true. I look back at, you know, I feel that we dropped seven points over the Christmas period. We had, like I say, three one on ones at Macclesfield, and you know, the penalty at Bury, and and uh, you know, obviously the the. The, the unfortunate penalty against us at Colchester and the deflected knee after a clearance and these things that have changed the course of games, I feel like we deserve it. And uh, unfortunately, we've got to keep going and change that luck and and you know start winning games and, and getting what we deserve. But at the moment, I'm disappointed with myself um, that I haven't been able to put more points on the board and chip away at the total we need. And it's making the task harder. But I'm still confident and I will go until the fat lady sings, so to speak. But no regrets about taking this job? No, no, absolutely not. Um, you can't look back with regrets. You can't look and and say, if I'd have known now what, you know, then what I know now and all that kind of stuff. You go, you throw yourself into it. And like I say, I, I, I'll take responsibility at the end of the season if it, if it doesn't pan out. But I'll, one thing I will know is I would have given it absolutely everything. You mentioned the fine margins phrase. Is that comforting in a way? Because it's not like you're getting blown away in games. So does that give you a, a, a bit of com a comfort? Yeah, I think it shows. The one thing I feel that I'm in control of is is the levels of performance. Uh, when I look back through the levels of performance, a lot of them, probably by the Grimsby game, a lot of them have been there or thereabouts. Um, I feel that when we have been poor, most of the poor ones were on that run over Christmas where we got injuries and lost legs and probably didn't have the energy to see through so many games in a short space of time. But other than that, we've been competitive. I thought, you know, Berry were really competitive, Colchester away. Um, I thought on Saturday, even though we weren't great going forward, we were very solid and disciplined and, and uh, organised as a team. Um, but... We we let ourselves down at the moment. Set pieces haven't been good enough, both for and against, and um, they're key in League Two particularly. And um, we need to try and turn little moments like them in our favour. Try and get them as a as a plus instead of a minus in the last eighteen games, because it can make a, a, a huge difference. The overall on Saturday with the positions, it goes without saying it's it's massive. Do you point that out to the players and and, and drum it into them, or do you kind of? Shy them away from how big it is and not just another game, but just try and keep things a bit normal. Try and keep it normal. I don't, they, they look at the league table, everyone's got access to it. They don't need to, um, 
I don't think they need me banging on about it. We need to just focus on what we're looking for from the game, what we think Yeovil will do, how we're going to counteract that, how we're going to impose ourselves on them and try and get the balance of all that right. And if we do and when we have in games, we've been good. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Could be, yeah, could be, absolutely. Um, I was, I've said I'd name a 19-man squad, monitor how people train over the next two days and make decisions based on that. I don't think I'm in a position to, you know, like we've seen with Louis Alessandra, to, to kind of mollycoddle and do it all exactly how you'd want it to be because we haven't got the strength in depth at the moment to do that so we may have to try and fast track a bit he's not going to be able to play bundles if if at all but but we'll have a look and if I think that he's up to being in and around the squad he'll be in it what's it like having him back has it given everybody a lift to see him back out on the training pitch he's a good kid I love him he smiles all the time and he's he's great like that I mean I, I obviously I know of him and I've watched loads of him in the past but actually as his manager I haven't had time to to even contemplate where he would fit into and how we can get the best out of him. So um, for now, um, it will just be perhaps the excitement he might bring. And, and if he is available for 20 minutes in a game, it might just make something happen. Does it give, it, give everybody a lift when they, when they see I think when you see every, when you've got good players back out training, it gives everyone a lift. So from when I first arrived, not having steady to having Kane for a bit, then Kane's gone back and now Kane, we're hoping Kane might come back and then getting Louis back and Enzo back. When you when you name these players at the level we're at, they're good players. They're, they're the sort of players other clubs would, would, would ask about and having them back in the training and back in the squad will be a big thing. Um, I've just got to ask one question. The Spygate rail. Um, I saw Bielsa's press conference yesterday. Everyone's making a big deal of it. Everyone's asking questions of managers. Have you ever known it gone on in your career? And yes. You would do yourself. No, not something I would do myself. Um, I haven't got the manpower. To, <laughs> to, to do it. Just about focus on. We we do well to get our staff at our training. <laughs> Let them someone else's. Um, I uh, no, it's not something that I would do. Um, I, I'd be interested to see how the league react to this, mm. because although there's not breaking any laws type comment. Um, yeah, there's got to be a a certain amount of ethics behind the game and sportsmanship and I'll be interested to see what the Football League, the EFL make of all this and see what their stance is on it. Um, personally, I don't agree with it. That's my opinion. Um, I, I, I watch the opposition last four or five games. I study them. Um, I look into as much as I can to prepare my team. I don't think I'd go to them lengths. Have you ever known it gone on your career? Uh, I think, I think, yeah, I think there was probably more access back in the day, and nowadays a lot more clubs have got nicer training grounds and security and stuff like that. Um, I think back in the day, a lot more teams used to train in areas where you could get public access. So perhaps it it did go on a little bit, but back in the day, in the old Wimbledon team, they wouldn't have learnt much other than they're going to get a good beating up at some point during the game so uh, that's about all they learned I think now the game's moved on with tactics formations etc so um, yeah, was, yeah like I say the most interesting thing for me of all this is how the league react to it Brilliant mate Tottenham Mark Yeah a couple of clips uh, you're obviously keen to avoid taking six points last week after the result last week does that put even more pressure on this result? It puts pressure on it's a game that we can get three points I really I know what it means if you don't get it and had this conversation with the chairman and you know we're getting to the point where a lot of people are just thinking it's not possible anyway um, and certainly they will feel that if we don't get a positive result on, on Saturday. I still look at it and go in the last 18 games can this team win eight games? That's what I've got. I know we've only won four in the first 28 but if we can improve the squad can we win eight games in 18? The answer is absolutely yes. And, and can we get some draws in there? Yes. Can we get to a certain points total that might be enough? Yes. And whether Saturday doesn't go according to plan, we've got another chance of following Saturday and we've still got 17 to go. And like I say, until it's mathematically impossible, you've seen it with uh, Newport, with Hartlepool in the past where they've looked doomed. Until it's mathematically impossible, we have to believe. And, you know, I know there's a lot of anxiety. I've said that word before. There is a lot, but... I've got to try and block that out and just focus on trying to win games of football, which hasn't come easy up till now. 
you've made a couple of new additions, like you say. How have they settled in? Now they've had a little bit longer. Training yeah, issue. great. I, you know, again, uh, I thought the keeper didn't put a foot wrong last week. He was excellent, and um, you know that would have been a, a worry going into just a couple of days training. Um, ben Barkley defensively has been excellent up till now. Hasn't put a foot wrong. You know, I think. The, the nerves around the team at times may have contributed to, to, to not being as great with the ball sometimes at the back, the, the players at the back, but we're working on that. Um, and Jim O'Brien obviously came in last week and, and I think got the fans man of the match. So, you know, I know that that's what he's capable of anyway. So there are three additions that have improved the team. And the main thing is, and just spoke to Alan, you know, there's lots of players we could sort of just go, oh, let's take him, let's take him. But I'm actually aiming high. And... It's not easy to aim high and, and get what you're asking for, but I'd rather start there. We've got two weeks after Saturday's game until our next game. Um, so, you know, I'd like to think that if I can't get anything done before sat Saturday, then then certainly that two-week period is going to be a really big two weeks for us to try and do it, get people in, get them training, get them embedded. And um, normally the last week of the transfer window is normally where it all hots up. And people always say to me, why do so many deals get done on transfer deadline day? And they don't realise. I think everyone all of a sudden just, you know, has just decided to sign players and rush when it's just a domino effect from somebody getting their business done, letting a player go, they get that player in, and the domino effect means that all of a sudden the waiting game's over and people become available because it's the last chance. So these next two weeks we're going to hopefully go hard. And if I can't get the, the high end that I'm asking for and looking for, the ones below it will still be people that I think will improve the team. Last week, you're obviously more happy with the defensive side of the game. Going forwards, didn't create too much. Is that something you tried to work on in training? Week, it's always a balance, isn't it? You know, at, uh, at Colchester the week before, we scored three great goals and looked good going forward. Um, but, but obviously... I didn't think we conceded three poor goals. I think the first one was poor, but the other two were unfortunate. Um, so it's just getting that balance right. And um, Yeovil have got a lot of pace in their team, a lot of athleticism, and we've got to make sure that we're we're ready for how we can deal with that. And you know, you don't, we don't want to be chasing a game. It's hard to chase a game. I think the stats when you go behind are high, and especially with a team that's you know down the bottom, not high on confidence. We need to try and get our noses in front. Now, some people might say, well, you're better off defending and knowing the chance will come at some point in the game. Some people will say, go for it and see if we can get your noses in front. Who knows what's the best way to do it, but it's, there's got to be a balance in everything you do. And we've worked hard to make us better without the ball. And I think we have been. We haven't been opened up anywhere near as much as we probably were before and right at the start when I came. Um, but we've then got to try and make sure we've got a real threat going forward. So what you're sort of expecting from like Yeovil? Um, well, they've had a tough time. They, I think they went nine or ten games without a win. They were they were superb against Mansfield last week. Um, I know Darren well. He's a good guy. He's, he gets them at it and um, does brilliant with with what he's got with the, with the budgets, restraints and stuff. So is they're going to be? It's going to be tough. They've got pace. They've got energy. They've got trickery. They've got some good players. And like you say, I can focus on Yeovil, um, but ultimately, if we don't perform. We, we won't win anything, so we need to focus on what we're doing, the energy levels, the, the quality we bring, and if we can get them bits right, then hopefully we'll give, give anyone a game. And we had a tough game when you overcame it early on in the season. Is that something the lads are wanting to put right themselves? Well, if you look at it, you know, I think, did they beat us 4-0 earlier in the season? And um, I think the same happened at Bury away. And we put in a totally different performance against Berry. So, you know, what was in the past was in the past. I can only focus on now. Like I say, I can't focus on the fact we lost on Saturday. I have to focus on 18 games. Can I get at least eight wins, seven, eight wins in them games and some draws and get to a certain points total? And that's all we can do. Every game's an opportunity to do that, no matter who it's against.